Hi, my name is Richard Curtis. I work for Adobe and I'm a solutions consultant and I'm focused on digital imaging. Today I'd like to show you a couple of new features inside Photoshop CC um, and this is kind of a wrap-up of a couple of features and how it's fundamentally different to CS6. Uh, the feature I'd like to show you today is the uh, linked smart objects and um, but then how we extend that in this version of Photoshop and we start including layer comps as part of smart objects. So let's have a look at that now. I'm going to go into um, Bridge. There are three images or three posters of this band that I'd like to uh, work on. So if I um, if I open them all up, you can see straight away that Photoshop's recognizing that I um, I don't have um, the right fonts on my computer. And these posters were built using the Typekit font service. So basically, what uh, Photoshop's going to do now is look through the uh, layers and tell me which fonts it needs to replace and we'll automatically try and match them onto the Creative Cloud using the Typekit service. So I press the next and it says I don't have the Gridiron Headline Pro. So you can see here in the missing fonts dialog that the Typekit service is on and it's on because inside the Creative Cloud desktop application we have fonts that are synchronizing. Under preferences we're able to see that the fonts are being synchronized just here. So what this will do is it will look on the Typekit service and find the fonts that match the fonts in the document. And if it can find them, it will automatically download them for me if I require that to do so. Um, so I'm going to press Resolve Fonts and I'm going to get it to uh, do that for me. And you can see now that the, um, the synchronized uh, match fonts have started and fonts have started to come down. And, and you can also see that on the second document I'm opening, um, there's some other fonts in there that are going to come down as well. And you can see they all come down as part of that process. This is great because when you start to share this with um, another user um, and they don't have the fonts on their machine, the Typekit service will then provide it for them. If we look at these images, um, they're missing band names at the bottom of the, um, of the poster. Um, now, I know the band names is a separate PSD file. So let's just go to the first one and then place the band names in. So previously, before uh, Photoshop CC, if you wanted to place something into this document, you'd have to embed it. However, now in CC, and it's been there for a while, and it really is a game changer, is the ability to go and place a linked object. So I was going to find that linked object, and I found the band names.psd file. I'm going to place that into this document just there. And again, just made to change the size of this, and then put it into position. Press enter. I'm going to do that very quickly on each of the other documents. Notice that the colors look exactly the same. That object has now been used across multiple uh, documents. If anything changes in that linked object, then that change will be sent through to these other files once they're opened and updated inside Photoshop. So now we've linked them in, um, we need to go in and just edit the band names because the colors need to match each of the posters. So let's just have a look what's inside band names. I'm just going to go to the um, properties panel. I'm just going to dock this in the side so you can see. On the properties panel, you have edit contents. And edit contents will then open up that PSD file for me and then allow me to make changes to it if I need to. However, it's worthwhile mentioning that on here as well are any layer comps that exist inside this linked object. So at any point in time, I can choose a layer comp to use on a different poster. This will really work really well on these three posters because they've all got different colors. So I can define all those colors inside this um, smart object and then I can apply them later. Before we do that, let's go into the contents of the band names and have a look what's in there. So you can see in here I've got my uh, all my band names and all that other kind of other stuff in there as well. If I just open up the layer comps window, you can see that we have got quite a few in there already. So I've got Jesse versus black, I've got Jesse versus white, and you see as I move these, the moment in time that they were created is then stored as these layer comps so I can store pretty much whatever I want to do. The layer comps has also been enhanced. We've now got much more control over what we're updating. So say for example in this case we're just recording 
the effect. We're not recording the layer position or the visibility. So I've got the effect on Jesse Boykins here in pink, and then the other band members here are white, and then in here it's completely different. As I look over here on the right side, you can see that the color overlays are changing because they were that's what how it was set when it was created. So let's go change something very quickly. I'm going to go to Jesse versus black, and I'm going to go down to that layer over here. I'm going to go to the color overlay. I may want to change this Jesse Boykin to be a different color, so I'm going to select that and choose a bit of a, a deeper red and press OK. And you can see it changes there inside the um, inside the file. Once I press OK, you'll see that the Jesse versus black layer comp setting now goes away, and that's because I've changed it. If I click on Jesse versus black, it will go to pink because um, I haven't recorded the color information. So I'm going to do that again very quickly and just go change the color overlay to a darker red, press OK. Now to update this one, I can then choose to update just the individual values or update the whole thing. So I can just update the effect. Now if I go down to Jesse versus white and go down to Jesse versus black, you'll see he's in red and Jesse versus white is still in pink. One of the other things I can do is I might want to update the black background of the text to be a slightly different shade. Now if I just go down the layer comps you'll see that some are black and some are not. So I want to be able to change the black in each of the black layer comps but don't want to affect the ones in white. So I'm going to select the first one which is the black and that's where the black for all of these is um, recorded. So I'm just going to go into each one and change them so let's just go into Wild Leaves, Color Overlay, and it's going to be a lighter shade of grey. I'm just going to copy this because I'm going to apply this to the other layer comps. You see it's changed the Wild Leaves there. I'm just going to change this in the other ones as well. And go to uh, Ninja. And to Vines. Now previously, if I wanted to update the other black ones with the same color, I'd have to go in manually into the layers and change them all. But now what I can do is just select the entries that I want to change. And when I synchronize, it'll synchronize everything that's being recorded and the colors across those layer comps. So press the synchronize, everything gets changed. So now when I go over to the black, they're now gray and the white ones haven't been altered. So that's a real time saver if you're using layer comps. So you can see the impact on the other files. I'd like to change something here that'll have an impact. So I'm going to change the wild leaves from orange to a different color. So I'm going to go to wild leaves. I'm just going to use the uh, move tool, right click, and the band names effects. I'm just going to go to wild leaves. I'm going to change the orange to be more of a burnt orange. And I'm just going to update this layer comp style. So press the FX. That updates it. So just to test that, I can click on the black version and click on the white version. You can see it's changed the color. If I now save that and go to the other posters, you'll see that the color in the other poster has also changed. But I still need to work on these um, posters and choose different colors. So if I go over to the band names linked smart object and go to the properties panel, I can then look at the layer comps that are available. And you see as I'm picking them off the list, they're changing. So I'm going to choose Jesse versus white for this one. Go to the next poster, it's more blue, so let's go find a blue one over here. There we go, that will do. Vimes versus white, you see it change. And over in this one, I'm going to change this to be like that. So you can see how I'm using a single linked file but using the layer comps and storing different variations of the, in this case, the band names for use in different purposes. So now we've got the linked smart objects functionality and we're using those in our posters or in our artwork, um, we may want to send this to a client. 
in previous versions of Photoshop for Creative Cloud, you had to package all these up yourself. Now we've got something called the Packager. So underneath the file, we have Package. If I click on Package, it will ask me where to put the files. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring all the linked smart objects together and the original artwork and any linked files and any linked smart objects will bring them through and create me a tree structure with all the information together. So you go to my desktop very quickly and create a new folder and I'll put um, Playfest, press Create and press Choose. It will now go and package the file up by going into all of the objects and fishing out all of the data that it needs. If I now go into the desktop to Playfest, you can see I now got the poster and I have all my links with all the band names and it's the, it's the layer comp of the smart object that I've used that we brought through and you can see all your other data is there but it all comes together in the main comp so that means that when this is opened by another client or another customer or somebody else as a retoucher or an art worker not only will they get the fonts coming through from Creative Cloud if they haven't already got them but they also have all the assets they need to actually fully realize or fully show what this artwork should look like as you created it. So we think that's a really uh, large move forward when it comes down to link smart objects, layer comps, the way you can work now with layer comps, and also the way you can package them up to send to your client. So thanks for watching. I hope you found that useful and we look forward to seeing you very soon. Thanks now. Bye bye.